Beatles, Beatles, Balls of Ghouls, how are we all doing? Hey guys, it's Dan from Old Mr. Grey, Dan Dalf the Grey, and I've been asked for a long time now. So it's a nice video. I got my tea. I'm ready to go. Side eye guys. You absolutely suck. Explore with me some of the pivotal moments in my career where I have really, really learned a thing or two. Again, my eyes have been wide open. I am reaching a higher level of enlightenment. So welcome back, everybody, for another top five debunks. This time it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have four real ones and one that was a tragic fail. Uh, today we're going to feature Beardo, Mr. Gray, Joe from Entity 7 Paranormal, and we're going to return with Crow of Judas. He was in the last video, but hey, this one was a solid debunk. This was really, really good. I, he really proved his case in this one. Uh, the fifth person I'm not going to mention. You're just going to have to stick around and see who the, who the big fail was. I am absolutely beat from... We, I just investigated with Dawson Toller, and I'm still like... The paranormal hangover thing is real. Um... However many hours past midnight that I stay up, it's that's how many days it takes to recover. So I'm headed for seven days of recovery, folks. But anyway, let's get into it today. I wanted to go over some of my influential debunkers, if, if you know what I mean. So I wanted to add this to this is in no particular order. Um, it's just hell. We're just calling it a top five. These are. Like I said, in no particular order. These are just five that I really, really liked. The one from Beardo, though, there's one that he did that I really wanted to find, and I cannot freaking find it. I spent hours looking for it. Uh, he debunked Laney and Ben where Ben's hand was in the shot, pulling a string, and then he had screen grabbed it before Ben removed that one and uploaded it with that removed. So I really wanted to find that one, but I could not find that for the life of me. So... Here we are. Let's get into it. Number, Number four. four. Beardos, weirdos. I was just, just about to go to bed. I work early, so I sleep early. Just about to turn the TV off, and I see Lenny and Ben have just uploaded a video. Their ghost is back, and it's fake. Let's go. So number four, we have Beardo, and like I said, there is no particular order. Um, I wanted to put him in the last video, but I knew I was going to do a part two, so... You know, it's Beardo. Like, everybody loves Beardo, or at least most people do. Uh, he's got a history of debunking Laney and Ben. And, he I mean, he really went to war with them for a little bit. You go watch his channel. 
Uh, you'll see a lot of videos about Laney and Ben. This particular one involves masking and, you know, Laney and Ben screwing up doing the masking. It's mostly Ben. So, as always, mad respect for Beardo. Even though, you know, he is friends with Jason Hawes. What, too soon? Shut the fuck up. Just kidding, Beardo. We love you. Well, this is called We Left. The SLS camera running in our haunted house. And this happened. If they take this video down because they see the mistake that I've just spotted, this video will disappear while I'm recording. At least we'll all know why. So I'm not going to play the entire video. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. you. Now, you saw my house, my house is really haunted part two. And Ben does the exact same trick as me. I'll tell you exactly how he's done it and exactly why there's no masking in this one for the most part. And then the bit that he does mask, he cocks up. This is the part where Ben describes what he's about to do and Beardo flat out catches him. So go ahead and watch this. Something, anything. I have been trying this for the past few days with not a lot of luck. Nothing's happened at all. So hopefully, fingers crossed, today might be the day that something's gonna happen. I've got it set up in the kitchen because obviously the kitchen has been a hot spot of late. Um, so if anything's gonna happen, I bank that it's going to happen in here, but this is we're going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it to go and do his thing. I'm going to go and sit in the other room. Leave this recording so you can see me. He is leaving this camera recording and he is taking one with him and recording. So there is no trickery involved. He will go into another room and keep <coughs> filming himself and it will be on screen to prove that he's not in the kitchen vacant. Doesn't mean somebody else isn't. However, it's him. Because watch this. The whole time. And because of their small contributions. So I'm going to skip a little bit because it's not really relevant to the video. So it's just Beardo talking about like one reason why these guys really bug him. Because they're, you know, raking people's money. You can. Watch it. Right there. There's your cut. This video just black screened when he went through the door. That's where I would have hidden the cut. He could have made a pause at this point of the video. Anyway, off he goes. Right. Let's go through here. Goes and sits in his living room. This door as well. And then we'll just... And basically says, I'm going to do what I would normally do. And he watches something on his laptop, probably porn. So that's one thing I've learned from Beardo and, you know, a few of the other debunkers is where these guys hide these cuts. And you'll see a lot of these, you know, paranormal channels, they'll do quick spins or something like that or like he said the screen goes black that is a perfect place to to hide a cut okay so this next part i'm going to skip it's the sls footage that ben captures which we all know the sls is bullshit whether it be an app or an actual sls cam it just it cannot be trusted so we're just going to go ahead and skip that because everybody knows that already if you those of you sat there going but he sat in the living room and there's a camera in the kitchen he could have hidden a cut when he went through that door this camera is static. It's the easiest camera. The easiest ways to hide cuts and edits is a static camera or a camera that's spinning so fast you can't make heads or tails of where anything is because it's all morphing hey, or I going from that. light into dark. Because when that camera goes dark, you can hide. You could hide three cuts in there. So what you've probably done is gone through the door. That camera goes black. That's where he's put the cut. He comes back into the kitchen, does whatever he does here, makes another cut and you can't see it because it's a static camera i can i can recreate this video frame by frame if i wanted to including the sls stick figure without using this app I mean, the sls stick figure pops in and out so yeah what he says is you don't even need an sls to to create this because i believe there's green screen sls footage on youtube that you can download and overlay in your videos my recent my house is haunted part two you've seen me do this exact same thing there's no masking there's no editing, there's no cuts. These tea towels are hung over this door to hide a reflection because he's laying on the floor down here and he's just got hold of the bottom of the cupboard and he's doing this. It's the exact same trick I did, but he's made a mistake even with that. Did you see it? <coughs> a weird bounce there is an editing mistake and there it is again and there it is again and there it is again and again and again 
And again, what he's done is pulled the door open, stopped it at a certain point and taken his hand off. And that's where the wobble is. But he's looped this part of the video to make it look like the door is constantly moving. He's just reversing, playing, reversing, playing. You can almost time it. He's cocked up. So a lot of these guys have done videos and point out masking and you know sometimes I catch it sometimes I don't. I recommend that you watch this video on a on as big a screen as possible because they're really really hard to see on a small screen. But um you know he's pointing things out that are actually going on, but it's just it's hard to see on a small screen. So if you can go ahead and watch the watch this on a bigger screen. And I will definitely link the video below so that you can watch the whole thing cuz I did cut a lot of stuff out cuz this is a uh, Kind of a highlight reel, not necessarily a reaction to one channel video. You done gone messed up? Happy it though, that was quite an easy debunk. There's more. What happens next is other things in his kitchen move. But he's left an editing mistake in again. Well, as I said, this is to hide a reflection because he doesn't have to use a mask. He is literally laying down here. But then things start moving over this end. And then a mask is used. And unfortunately, he's cocked up the mask. Okay, so the cupboard door is about to open. Now you've just seen his shadow there. He's deleted himself and the mask out here of this looped video. But he's left his shadow on the door. But there's something else. Look around this cooker. The cooker top. I'm pretty sure I've just heard something. See the that there? On the knife bark. There's a reflection caught for two frames. Then down here. I'm pretty sure... I've just heard something. More shadowing, more reflections in the knife in the block. Kitchen, it sounded like one of the cupboards, maybe drawers, something opened. Not sure what it was. But watch this area, and I'll tell you what the Either mistake is. Actually something. I've been waiting for days for this. More reflections. More shadows. Wait, that mask actually moved there. Watch this. That straight line of the mask, it's just moved. I've been waiting for days for this. Look at all this. You can see the mask. That line is a cut in the mask. And it's down this side of the cupboard. Cooker even. Now look at the top of the cooker where the burner ring is. There's a shadow again getting in the way. There's more masks Ooh, slipping. There was the hoodie. There are the drawers moving. There's the loop shadow on there. There's the cupboard door glitch. Because he's looped the footage to hide his mask. Now for a single second I don't believe that while this is going on he's there. <coughs> First he's laying under there. He records this, puts it on a loop, masks this area out. Stands there, pulls this stuff with a wire but his sleeve or the front of his hoodie was caught there. Pulls all the drawers open and the illusion is maintained that he is still in the living room when he's not. This is pre-recorded or post-recorded and just slapped over the top of it. And try again. Try harder. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So there you have it. I let that last clip run for a long, long time because, I mean, it's Beardo. I got nothing to add. Like, he explains it all. There was no point in me putting commentary in there. Uh, this next debunker, you're going to get a little more because I, I still have a question. So how does this masking work? How, you know, how do they do it? You know, and this and that and the other thing. So um, this is another video that I've seen a long, long time ago, and I just absolutely loved it. It explains how to do this masking stuff that all these debunkers point out and talk about. Number three. And so let's get into the next guy. The next guy is the world of Mr. Gray. And he really does a quick, quick little video on how masking is done. And this one was the one that I needed to see that's like, oh, okay, that's how these guys are doing this. So let's go ahead and watch Mr. Gray. So this video starts out with a title card that I cut out that basically says, you know, this happened in the other room when I was home. And, you know, it's all, it's all bunk and you'll see why, but... Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. <coughs> Listen for the EVPs. They're hilarious. Gaming balls. 
<laughs> Demon balls. Love it. <gasps> the door opened. <gasps> the other door opened. He must have a DR-60. So this one's harder to see on a small screen too. But that shelf is actually moving up and down that he pointed out. How many videos have you guys seen like that on YouTube, TikTok, especially TikTok is the butthole of paranormal videos. But uh, how many videos have you guys seen like that? Like tons. Well, Mr. Gray, Dandolph the Gray is going to explain exactly how he did that. <laughs> Deceit. Hey guys, Dan from Old Mr. Gray, Dandolph the Gray, and I've been asked for a long time now, and I always said, yes, I will get around to it, of what is a mask and how to make a mask out there every every single video ed is in software available whether it's paid or free can do a mask even the base you know even the most advanced like 3d tracking masks we're, we're not going to get into the 3d tracking that'll be for a future video but you can do 3d tracking masks uh but this is just going to be a basic as you just saw over there a fixed camera position and the reason i chose that is because 99 percent of the bo bollocks videos you see on youtube have all done that exact same technique Really Haunted, Ghost of Carl Melmain, Michael D. McGee, he doesn't do it anymore, but he used to do them that way. But yeah, this is why when you watch, if it's a fixed camera on YouTube showing ghostly things happening, you should, this is why you should always assume, always assume it's masking techniques, always. Before you even go down the line of this could be a ghost. <laughs> this is what you always got to do. But so we're going to go through it now, what I did. So, I mean, I've, you know, earlier in my career, quote, um, I used to think, man, these videos are freaking cool. Like, holy shit, that's, you know, good capture. And why don't I ever capture stuff like this and blah, blah, blah. But in the back of my mind, I kind of always knew that something, it, it's, that, man, it's, that stuff just doesn't really happen. And for all these videos to come out with people catching this shit, like, I don't know, what am I doing wrong? So, you know, videos like this are refreshing to see exactly how these people do it. Step by step. And hopefully I've explained it enough. Like I said, this is the most basic of masking. There are more advanced te techniques, which we'll get to in a future video. But for now, we'll just go through the basics. So this, this is me filming the clean plate. And basically with the clean plate, you want to get, you want to film the area you want to make a ghosty video. Yeah, so you, when you wanna when you wanna make a ghostly video like these top YouTubers always do, and you want it like in say there's a ghost in my kitchen or there's a ghost in my bedroom and I this I left this camera film and this is what I caught, All right? So you film the clean plate, so you basically you don't have anything happening in the in the background or anything whatsoever. Film about I don't know two minutes, however long you want the video for, it's up to you. Film about two minutes of clean plate. Clean plate is basically you want an entire area filmed with nothing happening so you can pick parts out of it and pick and choose what you want to include what you want to take out to the video stuff like that so once you've done that you want to film all the ghostly happenings so <laughs> so this is me scurrying about like bloody golem from the lord of the rings <laughs> obviously i'm trying obviously i had planned in advance where i'm going to add to the mask so this is why i'm ducking down and doing all kinds of things and yes, you will see my reflection in that microwave, but that hopefully will, would have gone with the mask. So this is me scurrying about, opening the cupboards, shaking the shelving, 
trying my best to keep my fingers out of where I know I'm going to put the mask because I filmed this part before I did the mask. So I knew I knew ahead of time what I was going to do. So now this is me putting the drawing the mask in. Basically, when you put a mask in using so <laughs> this is just eye opening. I mean, he's just showing you everything he did. I wonder how long it took him to make this video. I bet it wasn't very long because this looks really, really simple to do. I mean, I feel a little embarrassed that like smug, smug puppy and Lee from Really Haunted can figure this out, and I never could. So, sorry guys, I'm a disappointment. Uh, video editing software. So this is me now drawing the actual. Um, this is sped up for time, but this is me drawing the actual mask. Like I said, I knew where I was going to put the mask before I filmed it. But I was try. But when you draw the mask, you want to try your best to keep it with straight lines. Because if you do, if you could do like curved lines, you can't do curved lines. But it's harder than to sort of hide the mask. But if you do, if you keep within straight lines of the background uh, footage, you, you it's easier to hide it in the straight lines. If you know what I mean. So this, this is why, if you can see me drawing this now, I'm drawing this in as many straight lines as I can find the background footage. So then, once you do that, it basically it only include the mask once you've drawn that the mask only includes what inside of that line you've drawn man that looks really really easy i should try and do something just to uh not for this video but just to see if i can pull something like this off myself but that that looks insanely easy to me and i'm nowhere near the video editing capabilities that a lot of these guys are so all right let's get back into it so you've got your mask so then you overlay that footage onto your clean plate. So then once you do that, and then you check where you, wait, where you want that footage to start. You, so you've got your mask in footage, you overlay it onto your clean plate footage, and you figure out where you want it to start. Obviously you want it to start when the cupboards start opening and stuff starts happening. But you also want to add um, like, a, like a transition because if you don't add a transition, which I think I forgot to in one of the, in part one part of this, you might see like a not a quick cut, but you'll see a slight slight uh, light changes because I forgot to add it. But you you should add a cross dissolve uh, transition, so it'll be a smooth smooth um, cut into your effect, so to speak. So this is me now just adjusting the uh, mask because I realised that my reflection was shown in the microwave. But obviously, once that over is overlaid, as you can see, you can't see me opening those cupboards. So just to reiterate the basic um, things, I'll break it down now, the masks. So the, you've got the top shot, which, as you can see there, that's where I drew my mask. If I move it around, look, you can probably see me there, actually. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> so, see, this? you can move the dots around however you want. I mean, you can you can also delete that. If I cut that out, you can see the footage I originally filmed with me in shot, going around doing all my stuff. But if I just if I just quickly do I don't know, uh, if I just draw it again, let me make that bigger. If I draw it again, if I click on the pen tool there, on on the left under opacity, and this I'll show you exactly what I did. So basically, I cut to the lines as straight as I could. Obviously, I don't want to go up there. I want, I want to, I want to delete the bottom area basically. So, so I kept to the lines as much as I could there, there, and there, and there. This is just me rushing it now. But obviously, I'm keeping to the lines as best I can. But there, you don't have to. To the edge of the screen, then up there and up there, and boom, I'm gone. <laughs> and that's it. That is as basic as you can get for when you include a mask, and this is why whenever I can see, the, I can see always see the mistakes of the masks. There's mistakes there. If you watch the original uh, at the beginning of this video, if you watch that video, if you know what you're looking for, you'll spot various mistakes. You'll you might see like a, a tiny little fingertip going on one of those cupboards. Um, you might see a slight reflection in something. I can't remember, but. Yeah, and you, as also as, obviously as well, I was making sounds the entire time, so I kept those sounds in and just pretended it was sounds off camera, and I added a few of my own EVPs, demon balls and bollocks, <laughs> just to just to give it that little bit more, you know, because that's what they do. But this is why, 
I always say you should whenever you're watching these videos on YouTube these top five ghost videos or you know I have a ghost in my house and this is what happened you should always always assume there is masking trickery involved Absolutely if not right. masks at least strings being pu pulled off camera or other various techniques there's at least a hundred things you should tick off on your list to do with editing and trickery before you even think it could be a ghost and that's that's that basically so yeah that was a uh, basic masking 101 so there you have it that's a brief overview of his entire video and um, I cut out certain parts where he hid where he was pushing the shelf up with his hand because that broke the mask so he had to redo it and uh, block that hand out so um, but again go watch this entire video the link for the video will be in the description um, go watch it I mean I learned so much from watching this um, and when I watch videos now I, I do watch things different I look for reflections I look for little glitches in you know a static cam shouldn't have any glitches so if you see something that just you know a little bounce or something like that you probably can assume that that's where the masking starts so um so there you have it there we have mr gray let's move on to the next one number two okay guys so number two this time around is going to be Ent entity seven paranormal joe vitale i got my tea i'm ready to go So I'm just going to get to the point. I want to do something funny with this video, but quite honestly, I am not in the mood. For I saw this goofball a few months ago, and he came out with a video about the Ouija brothers. And he said just because they used an app, they were fake. They've been clear on why they use apps, how they use apps, blah, 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 for a long time. And this guy just, you know, because they use the apps, they're fake. So, you know, let's go ahead and show that part. But before we do that, you guys may notice I have a new painting in the background. This was a custom paint job from Paranormal Rooster, also known as BJ Stockland. On he does custom work. If anybody's interested, either contact him or me, and I'll get you hooked up with him. And uh, you can discuss what you want and pricing and all that other stuff. So um, go ahead and check that out. Hope you guys like the painting. I think it's really cool. The eyes glow in the dark. So at night, you just got these beady eyes staring back at you pretty creepy so anyway let's get into the angry idiot and uh see what he has to say about the ouija brothers anywho we have a highly requested one today as you can see from the title we're gonna check out the Ouija. i mean the ouija brothers sorry uh, i got high hopes for this one i'm not, not sure even gonna do. lie to you i have high hopes and i have a feeling they're gonna be crushed okay all hopes completely crashed. You even said it. We're going to put it on a thousand words. No, that's the words that come in the word bank. You don't add them to it, you dummy. This is a phone app and really one of the worst ones. Ghost tube? Wow. There goes the whole theory of you being real and stuff. <sighs> Honestly, I should just end this video now. I mean, like, for real, you're using ghost tube. You can't be real if you're using a bullshit app. Next clip. I somewhat agree with that for these channels that are running around using apps and lead their investigation, like Twin Paranormal. You know, they turn the app on and everything is related to what comes out of that app. So, you know, I agree with them from that aspect of it. But the Ouija brothers don't use apps that way. Um, I also, I've been using them recently in... But in a very specific way, I've said this a couple times, I write down four, three or four words on a piece of paper, and that's the only thing that I will accept coming out of that app. I don't say what the words are because I don't want my phone microphone to pick it up. So, you know, we, we've got to experiment with this stuff a little bit. So Joe and I were talking about the angry idiot and because uh, Joe had just done a video on him. And I was talking about doing a video about his reaction to the Ouija brothers. And Joe was like, well, you know, he used apps a few years ago, right? And it's on video. And I'm like, oh, shit, no. So Joe pointed me to a video that he had made three years ago. And Joe doesn't talk in the video at all. He just, you know, puts out five points about angry idiots um, 
contradictions in his hypocrisy. So let's go ahead and watch the one about the apps. I used to kind of like digital recorders on phones, but with today's technology and the phone, you can edit everything on a phone. So therefore, all phone apps, null and void. If you use Ram Donatica, which we already talked about, if you use any of the phone apps, the Necronomicon Con fake app, all of them, if you use, if you use that app, fake. Tonight, we're gonna mess with this app called Ram, Ram Donatica. I've been playing with it for the last week or so, and it seems to bring you to really freaky places if you wanna go to freaky places. Talk, like we actually talked about him. Hey, hey. take what? Well, it's not that it's, it might not be fake, it's, it's an ovulus. And an ovulus has a group of words that it can pick from. Wow. Well. Well, what? No, it's a phone app. And look, I'm just going to be honest. I've had this for a minute, and I've used it quite a few times. And it doesn't work in places that aren't haunted. I mean, honestly, like we did it in our house. And it ran for four hours and caught nothing. Now we're in here, I turn it on and it gets it immediately. So it's come kind of, I don't know, anybody here, what does well mean? Hey, Dad. Think. But I'm not done yet. If you have. So yeah, Joe brings out four more points about this guy and his contradictions. And I mean, clearly that is a direct opposite opinions. People that use apps are fake, but when I use it, it's real. I tried it out at a non-haunted location that didn't do anything, but this place is haunted and it's going off. Um, I got into, I may do a video on him someday because I got into watching some of his investigation stuff. What a train wreck. And for him to call himself the only real paranormal investigator is a joke. So let's move on to our fourth guy. Number one. So let's move on to our number one legitimate debunk of this video and uh today we're bringing back crow judas because i saw this video recently and it was an absolute banger um it's one of the best things when you can catch a hand in a shot or catch the string or something like that so today we're going to go back to crow of judas and he is reviewing or debunking a team called barrier beyond and straight up catches them with the string so let's go ahead and watch this so i'll go ahead and start out the sequence here <coughs> What do you need help with? Oh my what? god. Oh my god! What the f Yo! Victor, Victor, Yo. Victor, Victor! What the hell is that? Yo. Did you f see that? I left my flip flop in there. Dude, I'm so super shaky right now. Victor. Did that just f happen? Oh, it's Victor. been down my chest. You can hear my heart. Victor, I want to get out of here. Please. So, guys, this is why I like debunking, okay? It's just not about finding string, finding a cut, finding a mask. There's a lot more to debunking than just that. But one of the things that a lot of you guys know, you look at everything. You look at everything. You don't look at what they want you to see. You look at everything around it, how they're filming it. And this is a great example. And I want you to guys, and I want you guys to comment below real quick what you think is wrong with this picture. Okay, let's go. What do you think is wrong with this picture right here? This is Victor holding the camera, okay? We got Jasmine and Joey on the bed. What is wrong with this picture? Go ahead and comment. I'll, I'll roll the Wheel of Fortune music. So Crow is about to make some um, excellent points in filming, and he is right. Victor is a, he's a film school guy. He's made short films i believe and usually he's pretty spot on with his camera work and stuff like that but crow is going to point out a bunch of things that were done wrong in filming on purpose when i do it wrong it's just because i'm an idiot but people that go to film school should know better so i'm watching this and i'm like okay i already know something's going to happen on the left hand side of the screen and that's just that just comes from watching so many of these videos and the way they're shot the problem with this picture is why is he panned left I've seen Victor's videos as a cinematographer. This is a this is a cinematographer's nightmare right here. You have a lady and a guy on the bed doing this session. 
they should be the middle of the screen. The camera should be to the right with both of them in the picture. <coughs> there is absolutely no reason that this camera should be panned left towards that curtain. You're a fake and a phony and I wish I'd never laid eyes on you. That sends off red flags immediately. Luckily, he was panned to the left to catch it, right? Oh, by the way, the lighting in here is very bad, as we can see. This is crap lighting. Now, I was talking to Kenny Biddle about this, and he made a great point that they have, he has his camera lights turned off. And again, why would a cinematographer want that? Why is this fucking light so shit? So he's exactly right on all of that. I mean, that shot is specifically set up so they didn't miss that curtain move. And the lighting is awful. I mean, anybody that does any kind of filming, and you know, I'm not the greatest at lighting, but you would notice it if this light in front of me was off because I would look dark compared to the backlights and blah, blah, blah. And that's what they've done in this in this video. They've, they've set it up to be a nasty shot, and it's on purpose. So, I mean, at first I was like, make sure like there's nobody that can be underneath, behind the bed over there, they can be pulling the curtain, but you see all that stuff. It's, it's not that. It's got to be string. But I keep going first. Here we go. Now, as I'm watching this, I've watched that replay over and over <coughs> again, okay? The, for the initial time the curtain opened. I'm looking, I'm looking, looking over here to the right. Where is the string? Ah, da, da, da. And I'm telling you, it took so long. But when I rewatch this, as they're walking back into the room, as they're walking back in here, um, even with this dull screen, see, again, again, why don't they have their lights turned on? And um, I really wish I would have caught that first, but Kenny did. <laughs> but it's for a reason. Why in the fuck would you not have your camera light on? Because they don't want you to see the string, in my opinion. My opinion only. But if you look close enough, when the light hits it just right, you will see it shimmer. Dear God, it's beautiful. So now we're going to compare Victor's footage to Joey's footage. This is very important to my debunk because having two different camera angles, two different cameras, is going to show that the string was in the same place on both cameras. You're going to see two different takes of it, and they're both different, but the string is in the same spot. So here we go. So look at the difference now. I've done mess with the color filters, brighten everything up to make that string pop out, okay? Now if you look to the left of this bedpost, you can see a little shiny thing there. You see that? That's where I first spotted that string. And that string is coming down that curtain leading to where Victor was standing. And the thing is with fishing string or magician string, you're not gonna see the whole string just dangling. You're gonna see points of light as light reflects off that string. So yeah, that is a bonus when you always get a second camera to, to review and verify what you think you see. Um, and I think he says it here maybe in the next clips, but like he says, you'll never see the whole string or rarely, but you'll just kept catch glimpses of the light so let's go ahead and continue watching as he points out more points of the string and stuff there's a whole lot more to this video so again it'll be linked in the description box go watch this entire video it's a really really good debunk here we go let's look to your bottom left here you see that string is right at that bottom left there it goes that's the string and that's right about where his arm was at as well also I wanted to point out that you're going to see his hand pop into the view at the bottom left hand corner and i believe it's because he was using his left hand to pull the string with and he accidentally got it in the shot there's no reason for his hand to be up that high yeah. and remember this is victor's footage we've already watched joey's footage and the string is in the same exact spot so there you have it guys uh side or side i got geez i apologize crow has straight up caught these guys red-handed with the string in hand, literally. Um, that's a good, solid debunk when you can find the string and evidence of it. So, what the fuck is this? this? So, on to our big fail. This was the biggest debunking fail, I think, of the year. <laughs> this guy, some of you guys may know who he is, some may not. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want people to go over to his channel. And again, don't give him hate. It's This incident happened a long time ago, but I figured, what the heck, let's just recap it and put it in our top five debunks as the bad example. So, this one is literally what the fuck is going through your brain. 
side eye guy. You absolutely suck. The things I do to earn money. See, that tells us everything. What's up, guys? This is Mark, and I'm a real paranormal investigator, and we are going to be watching like the Side Eye Guys video when he did a live at the Conjuring House. Now, typically, I'm a very big fan of the Side Eye Guy, but something just rubbed me a little bit wrong on this video, so let's check it out, and you'll get my own thoughts. Hey, hey, Segways. For those of you who are unaware, I was at the Conjuring House very recently. Yeah. The Conjuring House. I tagged along with Entity 7 Paranormal Joe Patali and Weeping Willow Paranormal, who are all great people and very trustworthy channels who do not fake their paranormal investigations. Well, we're gonna see about that because there's something at the very end of the video that kind of tells me that maybe everything that they do and say is not on the up and up. We'll see. So you've actually caught Joe Vitale faking? I can't wait for this debunk. This is going to be good. Before we get started in the basement, I have to ask you all to please stay till the very end of this video because the finale is nothing short of spectacular and I promise you that's not me bullshitting just to help with my audience retention. And I ask you to watch my video all the way through so I can disprove everything that is happening in Ooh, that clip good. at the very end and it's exactly why I don't believe anything that that other team has to say. Ooh, he's going to bring receipts. This is going to be good. I can't wait for this. I did say in the early stages of this video to stick around till the end because something special is about to happen. <coughs> this is kind of how we met for, uh, through the documentary and uh, kind of come first. Like come full, full circle. circle. Yeah. I can't speak. Jeez. So, yeah. Uh, I think there's only one thing to do. One thing left to do. So. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Would you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We we're, and we're alive. Okay. Yeah, and we're alive. <laughs> of course. Okay, I, he didn't go to Jared, I promise. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so here's my hot take for this. Now, first off, let me say congratulations to you two. I don't know any of them. I know I've talked a lot of crap about them as paranormal investigators, but I don't know them personally. So congratulations if you see this video. But oh, oh they saw it. So just a lesson in life. Anytime someone says, makes a statement, and then says but and then makes another statement, everything before the word but you believe as the making, guy making the statement is bullshit. So keep that in mind as he continues with his, he says he's got the proof, so I'm waiting. Now, if you just watch how this whole interaction is between them two, you can clearly tell that this was set up. She was probably already proposed to. They've already done this. Oh. And they recreated and it for the live. And you have proof, she right? She knew just, oh, he, you, I, he, I promise you he didn't go to Jared. So, I mean, she was playing along with this, and it was horrible <coughs> acting, so you can tell that this was all made up. Now, my issue with that is that they're willing to do this, a special moment like this, recreating it for live purposes, for views, clicks, whatever, comments. So they're willing to do that and lie to you, your, their viewers, their audience. What else are they willing to lie to you about? Seriously, dude, that's your proof because you think, I mean, and you're going to blast them as investigators. I've seen your investigation videos. They're awful. It's nothing but the typical same YouTube bullshit, the apps, the things that light up, the overexcitement, the... The one I caught you, you scratch yourself, and then a few minutes later, you're like, did I, did, did I get scratched? Like, I mean, come on, man. So we're going to need more proof than that that you've busted them and caught them faking. Um, I believe that, and I said this in a video because I've already done a video about this, but I, I don't think Joe and Dawn are people that really like being the center of attention. Um, I just, that's the, that's kind of the vibe they give off, so... They weren't acting. They're just awkward 
doing a proposal on a live stream. You know, every bit of this was legit. And for you to say it's a lie, I mean, that's just that's just a low blow for no reason. The guy has never done anything to you, never went at you. And then all of a sudden you challenge this beautiful moment in their lives. So for that, I think you're I'm, I'm going to be nicer to you because I don't know why I just am. But, you know, I'm not a big fan. Let's put it that way. So there you have it, folks, the top four debunks and one big fail. So join us again next time. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but we'll come up with something. And thanks for watching.